We're here at the Autocar stand at IDEF 2019. We have Serdar of Autocar with us and we're going to talk about the Acrep 2 and the Tulpar light tank. Serdar, so, thank you very much for your time. Can you tell us a little bit about what led to the development of the Acrep? Uh, obviously it's a, an electric vehicle which is a very exciting development for the defense world. So welcome. Thank it's you. our first debate. We are presenting our Acrep 2 uh, as a technological demonstrator here. Uh, Autocar had already developed and marketed and produced lots of Acrep vehicles in the past. Mm -hmm. Then we ceased production uh, in 2000 uh, and now we are relaunching the Acrep with new concepts and technologies. Formerly it was a three-man carrier, a reconnaissance vehicle uh -huh. with a uh, normal configuration as driver, commander and an operator. Still it's the same but with more protection more but with more technological inputs with more mobility and firepower uh -huh. uh, this version of Acrep which we are making the debate here is the full electric version okay. which you may uh, be uh, fond of because of low acoustic signature low thermal signature uh, which is a, also by architecture is a very low silhouette which you want from a reconnaissance vehicle, yeah. which we will, be, we will be developing as a uh, platform for various different applications as reconnaissance. I can also see that you've got quite a, a hefty medium caliber cannon on there. Is that defined by the realities of sort of modern warfare, the needs for a reconnaissance vehicle to have its own firepower? Yes, it is what we call as concept-wise a forced reconnaissance. Uh, actually, we have also an electronic reconnaissance pod on top of the turret, which is an elevating mast, which can do long-range recce and surveillance uh, under a uh, cover. And the turret also is a remotely controlled turret, which, if identified as an enemy, can tackle with the enemy with a medium caliber turret. So that is the concept, and we displayed this uh, concept, the concept-wise, uh, two years ago. Now we can see the hardware. Yeah, it, lo it looks great. What, what challenges have you had in creating an electric vehicle that's powerful enough to move an, an, an armored platform? Because I, I assume the Acrep is reasonably heavy, um, so there must have been some challenges involved in developing the electrical power for that's that. That's it. That's always the big question is the range, of yeah. course, and how you carry the electrical power to the battlefield. There are lots of questions to it. Uh, it is, uh, for me, it is very easy to describe a commercial vehicle like a municipal bus as far as the range is concerned because you define uh, the route, the, the bus stop numbers, the air condition works, whatever, in a bus. So you can very easily define the range for a municipal electrical bus. But for a tactical bus, it's very hard. Yeah. But even a reconnaissance bus uh, vehicle, it's very hard. We define it as a mission profile. The mission profile, you define a mission profile, not a range, for a reconnaissance vehicle. Being in the friendly lines, leaving the friendly lines, doing a defined mission profile in a defined envelope in an enemy zone and coming safely back home. So Acrep with this configuration, as a normal uh, mission profile doing the electro-optical work, doing some scanning, electro scanning, and doing some firings and coming safely back home as a merely uh, plus a uh, pocket of around 200 kilometers with the existing battery. The battery is only located at the back of the vehicle, like a pack, and the front is totally empty for a secondary pack. So if the range is needed to be increased, we can put a second battery pack the tactical vehicles now runs only with diesel. Uh, you need to have a, a diesel refueling yeah. somewhere in the field sometime. The only point is the charging time. Acrep has a battery pack which can easily be removed by a forklift in the battery in the in the field, which can be uh, refreshed with the full uh, charged battery in a few seconds. Wow. So. This is also uh, something to, uh, this to uh, understand. So you can bring diesel fuel or fully fresh battery, fully charged battery pack to the Acrep somewhere. 
So we will learn actually yeah. uh, as we study and as we work on different missions. So it will be a good, nice concept to explore more. So in, in, in terms of the logistics train, it's not actually going to be that far removed from what armed forces are already used to. That's right, that's right. It wholly uh, changes the logistic chain, but it's not the only case. It also changes the uh, maintenance schedules as well. There is very little to maintain in those vehicles. Uh, less moving parts, many less mechanical parts, so it also affects, uh, it gives a chain reaction to whole army logistics as well. Oh, perfect. If we could move on to talk about the, the tool power light tank. Um, I've read some studies uh, which indicate that a lighter armoured system with a large calibre armament such as the, the, the 105 that the tool power carries is actually a very effective way to increase the combat capabilities of an infantry force. Is that the kind of design principle that underlines the vehicle? Actually, the Tulpal platform is developed by Autocar as a private project for the upcoming needs of the Turkish Army. We were working on the project, but meanwhile, in parallel, uh, there are lots of, we happen to see that there are lots of opportunities in, in different armies for, for a medium tank. Uh, in NATO concept, that type of uh, uh, configuration is more infantry support, fire support vehicle, and Tool power by this platform supports this type of mission on top with high degree of protection uh, including the mine protection tool power medium tank gives a nice solution with this configuration for the customers requiring medium tank uh, because of the weight bridge limit limitations uh, some of the countries cannot go more than 40 tons for a high power po uh, firepower. So Tulpar uh, is more or less less than 20 tons than a NATO standard uh, weight class of a uh, main battle tank, but it provides a good firepower uh, for tank to tank firing or uh, long range uh, fighting among tanks. So uh, Tulpar medium tank with 105 millimeter configuration and with the today's uh, developed new generation ammunition yeah. gives a good firing power and penetration power with the armor piercing sabots or high explosives is a good solution for many of the users worldwide. So it, it introduces uh, quite a high level of lethality onto the battlefield at a, a, a relatively low cost and a reduced logistics strain as well. Um, and is it a are there any sort of potential customers that you have in mind uh, that you're able to tell us about at all? Uh, of course, we are in a competition and a uh, tender in two countries where the shortlists are released and we are in the shortlist. So we expect to have uh, good results within the context of this year, hopefully. Uh, there are also other countries which are interested with the uh, concept and the usage. So we have scheduled uh, trial and demonstrations into other overseas countries uh, for the same configuration. So I think that uh, due to the uh, protection, firepower and the mobility package that we offer with Tulpar, we will have a, a nice penetration of the uh, world market uh, in many countries. So there is a great interest. That's great. I, I look forward to hearing more about that and the Aqueb. One more vehicle, if we can. I saw you've, you've got a special operations type vehicle, a, a, a dress down patrol vehicle over uh, behind us on the stand. Wh who is that aimed at uh, and what has prompted that development? Uh, actually, we have, uh, we once had a special operations vehicle uh, on old Land Rover Defender chassis and it is in service with the Turkish Special Forces. On top, we exported uh, this type of configuration to nine different uh, countries worldwide. So we are aware of uh, that SOV type, special operations type vehicle needs, and uh, we are following this special operations, uh, special forces requirements worldwide. Uh, as you know, we have a vehicle called Ural, yep. which is uh, a mine protect, a mine and uh, small arms protected version. And we, uh, depending upon the future needs of those, we want to cater those needs 
with when the exi this existence or cessation of the defender, the uh, Land Rover defender. So we uh, use the Ural platform, existing Ural platform, and uh, try to make a new demonstrator uh, called Ural SOV in this. So uh, different than the defender, the armor is on the floor and on the firewall and at the waist level. So it provides a uh, level of ballistic protection all around at waist level and at top it is again a more or less the same type of configuration with a circular ring at the back capable of uh, accepting 0.50 or 40 millimeter grenade launcher and two machine guns in front and rear with a frontal arc and rear arc and you can carry nearly one and a half tons of payload including to the mission of your special forces. Okay, that's great. So some interesting times ahead for Autocar then. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's been brilliant and again, we look forward to hearing about the success of these vehicles in the future.